So more about collisions. Start out with a kind of simple example. So suppose some dude's got a cannon. Tells you, tells you that he's going to take this cannon, all right? And he tells you what he's going to do is he's going to, he's got this fantastic cannon, he's going to shoot over this tree, all right? And um, I don't know what is he shooting. He's uh, Abe Fine, shoot Abe Lincoln. <laughs> um, riding on a cat. <laughs> Why not? And he says that uh, they're connected by, uh, you know, the writing on this bullet. And I'm going to ask you how it actually fires. Um, all right, and then it's exploding. And once they get to here, um, Abe Lincoln, he said, is, uh, well, Abe Lincoln goes straight up into the sky, like so. And he says the cat, um, Falls into this oversized laundry basket down here. Oh, wait, wouldn't that have its fall? <laughs> it's got spikes in the <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. It's it's a it's a it's I, I forgot to say it. It's full of broken glass. Is that better? Okay, so. Um. Anyway, so this is what the uh, the guy over here tells you. I don't know who walked over here. Pac-Man, I don't know. That's what Pac-Man tells you. And um, so do you, um, do you believe him? Or do you re reject his story as being unphysical? No, in the circumstances. Ignoring, of course, the fictional nature of the you know, <laughs> creatures involved and so forth and so on. And saying, in terms of physics, what is, what is just preposterous about this alleged motion? Yeah. They have horizontal velocity. Right. Could you? Could you? Well, it's 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 worse than that. I mean, and I'm, I'm also I'm also telling you that this, that's everything involved, right? So here's the problem. The problem with this is right over here. You have you know the momentum. Basically, the the momentum right before the event. It's I mean, if I say p minus is right before the explosion, there's definitely a horizontal component, right? But the p after the p right after the explosion is purely vertical, right? Which is impossible because that means that momentum is not conserved in the explosion, which is a violation of momentum conservation. So this story violates momentum conservation. So you can you can you can wake up from your from your nightmare, go back to the world where physics works. Yes. What if the explosion destroys the matter? <laughs> Even if it destroys the matter and converts it into energy, there still must be, um, you know, momentum. Now, if you're like, if you're if you're like the uh, you know the, the energy which is created goes this way, that energy could carry with it momentum, but that's kind of a, a but beyond what we're talking. About. It is true that light has momentum, but light also has no mass. So that has to wait for another day. That doesn't really fit into our current discussion. P equals mv doesn't make sense for Mike. Yeah. What if the explosion was a position such that it applied a force this way that would counteract the velocity? But the thing is, it's a closed system, right? So there's no external force that can supply that change in momentum. Gas producing the explosion. What's up? Gas producing the explosion. Well, then, well then, they, then I would have to include that. I said this is it. I mean, you are of course correct. I, ideally, if you had, um, you know, Abraham Lincoln or whoever this creature is, if he was instead of, you know, if he was riding on a little hover thing, right, and that hover thing had a little rocket here, then of course he could stop. He could he could he could halt the horizontal motion by just ejecting mass that way. So. Then the, the momentum could still be conserved because you had 
gas going that way and he's going the opposite way. But obviously, you know, that would, that's not what I'm talking about here. But now, if you, if you, um, if I was to get this problem on the test somehow, um, and you said, well, if there was a gas exerted that way, momentum would still be conserved, so it's reasonable. I would obviously give you credit. <laughs> that would be, I would be delighted. Anyway, so not about this little example. Let me go on to an actual real one. <clears throat> Part of my point here was there, don't, there doesn't have to be numbers involved, right? Some problems you can just solve conceptually, like that one. This one, I'll put some numbers in. So suppose you've got an intersection, all right? And um, yeah, to make things a little bit different, I'm going to make it an angle for a change. All right, so in this way, you've got a clown car. Suppose you've got a clown car here, and it's going at, uh, gee, I don't know, 20 meters per second. Um, it's got a bunch of clowns in it, so its mass is, uh, let's say, M1, I don't know. 10,000 kilograms. It's a lot of pounds. All right. And then um, over here, you have, um, yeah, I don't know, school bus. All right. It, it, don't worry, it's not full of children, it's full of convicts, so don't feel bad. <laughs> 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 They stole the bus. Once the school bus is too uh, old and decrepit for the schools, they give it to the prison where this thing happens. Okay, fine. This is uh, this is going 30 meters per second. Kind of moving. And let's suppose it has mass. Um, so they don't see the other midnights. Well, let's say it only has a mass of 5,000 kilograms. Probably kind of ridiculous, but anyway, there you go. If it's bothering you, I can make it. Here, here, I'll, I know it's bothering some of you. I'll make it 15. Is that better? You're now worried that it's ridiculous. Yeah, I'm, I'm very worried. <laughs> and then, of course, to make this interesting, let's let them collide. All right. They collide together. They get stuck. Um, collision. Bang. Collision. And then. Um, they, of course, go skidding off together across the road, where they eventually come to a stop, but we don't really I don't care too much about that just yet. So what I'd like to know is the angle theta here, as well as the, um, the speed right after um, the collision, right? So let me call that B plus. In indicating just right after time zero, which is, say, the collision, now, in order to make sense of this problem, I also need to give you the angle of the road. Usually, I make this angle 90 degrees, but I thought it'd be fun to make it something else for a change. So, what do you guys want to make it? 60. Okay, I'll take it. 60 degrees. Now, how to solve this problem? So, again, our goal is to find the speed of the um, clown car slash school bus combination. Um, I guess it's a clown prison bus. Now, bus car. Bus car. Clown, clown prison bus car. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> then the question is what's the speed and what's the angle? Okay. This is actually a very simple problem. All you have to do is conserve momentum before and after the collision. Momentum is a vector, you must treat it as such. So, what's the initial momentum? The initial momentum, let's say piece of knot, would be, um, I'll make these vectors here, so 10,000 times 20, uh, that's the momentum of the clown car. And then, let's see here, to get the momentum of the school bus, I really have to break this 30 meters per second into pieces, right? So if you've got 30 meters per second like this, I can decompose it into two pieces, the horizontal and the vertical. Um, if that's 60 degrees, so is this, right? And so we've got ourselves 30 times the sine of 60 meters per second for the vertical, and we've got 30 times the cosine of 60 meters per second for the horizontal. And of course, those both have to be multiplied by the 15,000. So I'm going to leave 15,000 up front this time. 
All right, fine. To be, to be more consistent, let me put the mass outside the velocities. All right. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. So horizontal cosine of 60 is a half, so that's 15 meters per second. Um, sine of 60 is like 0.866666, roughly. That I do not know off the top of my head. Wolfram Alpha, very relaxing. I think it's strangely relaxing about it. 30 times the sine, 60. Exact result, 15 times the root 3. I don't really care about that. 25.98, I'll use that one. Meters per second. Does it make sense that both of these are positive? You know, let's do a stop. Let's stop and do a check on our logic. Does that make sense? Yeah, the velocity is going like in the north easterly direction, so that's positive. And of course, uh, for some reason, I'm not putting meters per second here. Sorry about that. Let me be consistent in my inconsistency of not putting units until the very end, which would be kilograms meters per second. To be feeling guilty about not putting them in there, they are. That's the, that, is there any other momentum before the collision? Yep. No, that, that's it. Now, over here, I can again think about, I can think about the, you know, the, the, the final velocity, this V plus, and I can think about how that breaks down in terms of theta, right? So here you've got V plus cosine theta, <coughs> and over here, You've got V plus sine theta with theta so defined, right? So what's PF? PF is uh, it's going to be V plus, which I don't know, right? Oh, excuse me. What's the mass of the clown prison bus car? 25,000. Yeah, so 25,000. And then I've got myself a V plus cosine theta. I'm on the plus sine theta. This, of course, is all together the plus the after velocity right after the collision. Poor friction has had a chance to slow the thing down. Okay? Um, and this should all be equal to what? This stuff added together, right? We could do what? Like uh, 25,000. Uh, 20, let's see, what's 20,000 plus? Well, that's 225,000, isn't it? Is that right? Wait a minute. Oh, I can't do math. Maybe I should just leave a uh, 10,000 up front. I want to leave a 10,000 up front, if that's okay with you guys. If I leave the 10,000 up front, I've got 20, 20 plus, Cancel. I, I basically I divide both sides by 
my 10,000 kilograms, I'm wondering the math. To get to this. Okay, and then, so you've got two equations, two unknowns, right? You've got 2.5 V plus cosine data is equal to 42.5, and you've got 2.5 V plus sine data is equal to 38.97. Meters per second, meters per second, right? How do you solve these? How do you solve these such equations? Yeah, divide equations is a good option here, right? Um, so I would say divide the the lower one by the upper one, so I get a tangent theta, right? So if I divide these equations, I get tangent theta is equal to what? Uh, 38.97 divided by 42.5. So therefore theta is equal to the inverse tangent of 38.97 divided by Together, I'm saying they slide off at that angle. Okay. So I'm, I'm assuming that they stick together in the collision process. All right, never mind. I'm sorry. We could work other problems where they don't stick together. I'll do one like that next, actually. Not cloud car and prison bus, but you know, something else. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, you know, seeing past the particular details of this problem, the important thing you should pick up from this example that we're doing for a two-dimensional collision problem, you need to think about momentum as a vector, right? Your ability to do this problem or not is very much based on your ability to think of momentum as a vector or not, which means you need to know how to figure out how velocities break down into x, y components based on the particular geometry of a particular problem, right? That's really the, the you know, where the rubber hits the road in this problem. <laughs> Pun not intended, but I'll take it. Um, if you did have, if you did have friction, you could ask the question, how long does it take for this thing to come to a stop, right? 
Um, for example, you could say, well, suppose that the coefficient of friction, kinetic friction, let's just for the sake of uh, discussion, let's suppose the coefficient of kinetic friction happens to be 0.7 after the collision. You could say, how far then? What's this? You know, what's the distance it skids to a stop? Right. That's a reasonable question you can tack on to this problem. How would you solve that? Now that we've done what we've done. <coughs> Basically there, the idea is right after the collision, you have that initial speed V plus, right? And then what's friction doing? It's slowing it down. It's taking away energy, right? So what you have then is the energy right at the time plus is equal to the, what? The work done by friction, the force of friction times the skidding distance. Now the force of friction here, which is the mu sub k times the, the you know, uh, what is it? M1 plus M2. times g um, times d. And so you can solve that for d, right? The distance it would skid would be something like the energy plus is what? It's kinetic energy. So you got like 1 half um, mass uh, 1 plus mass 2, d plus squared. That would be the energy. It's all kinetic at the start, right? And I got to divide by the coefficient of kinetic friction times the weight, which is nice because you notice that the mass is cancel, right? And so all we really have to calculate, since we went to the trouble, here, 1 over 2, so that's um, d plus squared, divided by 2 times 0.7 is 1.4, um, times 9.8 meters per second squared. Let's see here, d plus is what, though? 23.07 meters per second squared. 9.8. What do we get? not going to be on the road. <laughs> Unless right. there's a side street. Yeah, there's a side street. Um, I think you're probably going to hit a guardrail or go off into a field or something, right? Should be on the Audubon. On the Audubon. Yeah. They have really, really wide roads. Hmm. But, it's it's seats, but it, are these appropriate speeds for the Audubon? Right? Maybe no, no, they're not enough. Anyway, that's an example. Let me do another. The next example I want to show you guys is the ballistic pendulum. Actually, I mean, I said I was going to do one that needed an angle. Um, I'll try to do that one after the ballistic pendulum. Let me kind of pick it up and speed up here a little bit. I have two more examples I want to show you today. So. The combined unit had a lower vertical velocity than the, um, the separate units. So it, it did lose velocity when it merged. Is that just because of the change in mass? Yeah. I'm not sure what you, what you mean. Like the, the velocity after has a smaller vertical component. Than uh, yes, but all of the mass is all going at that yeah. smaller value. So, the, if we if we did it right, we should have the same vertical momentum vertical momentum before and after. So, so it would be like the same momentum, <coughs> the same velocity per kilogram. Per same mass per times weight relative to the weight. Same mass times velocity 
we're talking about the total mass and the okay. velocity. If everything's going at the same velocity. I mean, another example of this would be, for example, if you shoot somebody, right? Um, you can shoot, you know, shoot a gun. Bullets in projectile motion, right? Think about conservation of momentum before and after the bullet hits the person. Um, it's, it's a criminal, don't worry. <laughs> and um, so, the person shooting or the one getting shot? Oh, the, one getting shot. Let's say the one getting shot. Let's try it. <laughs> well, why don't, why don't we say the momentum of the gun before and after? The no, bullet. no, I want to talk about the bullet. So, this is a, <laughs> you know, you, you have that, you know, thousand meters per second or whatever for the bullet, right? And then it hits the person, and um, I don't know, let's say it gets stuck in there. Whatever, they, they're fine, all right. But the bullet's stuck on them, right? Now, they don't, they don't go zipping back at a thousand meters per second, right? <laughs> I mean, even, even in your most ridiculous action movies, they might get thrown back at like five meters per second, which is an absurdity, right? Because if you have something like, you know, the bullets, a thousand meters per second, let's say that's absurd, and let's say that the mass is equal to 0 0.001 kilograms, that's kind of bullfuckish, bull <coughs> gram, whatever, and then, you know, we can put a cat. Then, there you go. And then, then it hits the cat, right? And then, I don't know, whatever gets stuck in the cat. Right? And then what's the final velocity? Well, if the mass of the cat is like 10 kilograms, then you have, you know, you have 0 0.001 kilograms times 1,000 meters per second. Let's suppose the cat's initially at rest is equal to um, 10.001 kilograms. So the, this is a practically negligible times VF. And so the VF in that case, this is initial momentum. This is final momentum. In the one-dimensional case, you don't need vectors, right? And as you can see, VF is something like you know, one meters per second divided by 10. And I lost my kilogram up here. Now the kilograms cancel, and you're basically left with about 0 0.1 meters per second. Even though the bullet's going that fast, the point is it doesn't have much mass, right? So it doesn't have much momentum. So we should make bigger bullets. <laughs> yeah, you should you need to make bigger bullets or faster bullets. Yeah, or faster bullet. faster it's not so bullet. much the momentum <laughs> that the bullet imparts to the body. I think it's really more about the stuff the bullet tears <coughs> through. That's kind of where the badness comes from, right? It all turns through the bullet. And then the energy yeah, on the, the shock bullet. wave. All right, yeah. I, I, just, I, I see I just entered in a territory I, I should not. Don't want the class to be students. The question was less than students. That's how we I'm not going to become engineers. I mostly know about <coughs> fictional weapons, not real ones. But. That's why I real gun works better. faster velocity. I don't have cable right now, so I can't really watch my. Like, I like watching that stupid future weapons show or whatever. Yes. I enjoy the absurdity of his narration. Yeah. It's so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway. <clears throat> All right, so let's take pendulum. So here's the, <laughs> there are various, um, Say um, versions to this, but here's one. So you got this pendulum, the mass thing, um, uh, just sitting there, and just before it hits, there is a bullet. Let me draw it a little bit over here. All right, like this, um, with initial velocity v naught. All right, and mass little m. Okay, and then the standard question is something like this. Here's the, you know, here's the crown, basically. And then, so the, 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 the little bullet it, it hits, the, <clears throat> hits the pendulum, which maybe is like a big clay bob or something, whatever. The bullet gets stuck in there. It doesn't travel through. It just gets lodged in there. <clears throat> then the question is, <clears throat> how far up does the pendulum swing? So the question is, what's h? Given, so here's the final, the final resting place for the bob. We have here somewhere. That was a bad picture, sorry. <sighs> so 
So maybe up here somewhere, I don't know. And that I just, for the sake of illustration, keeping it level, I don't want you to think about the issues of it not being level, that's not the point. So this, this height h is the question of what h is this what. Let me show you how I solved it on my junior level classical mechanics test. Here's how I solved it. I said, oh man, this problem's easy. Sweet. Actually, I didn't say sweet. That, 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 that terminology didn't exist when I was your age. I mean, that had not been invented yet. What did you say? I don't know. I, I was just mostly happy. I thought it was jeepers. <laughs> this, problem is, this problem's keen. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway, so I, I thought, well, the, the kinetic energy, right, of the start should be equal to, that's the initial kinetic energy, right? And energy is conserved, yeah, so um, at the end, I should have little m plus big M, right, um, times GH. So therefore, H is equal to one half m v naught squared divided by m plus big M um, times g. Put a box around it, move on to the next problem. And I was, I was pleased with myself. I thought, man, I spent a minute on that problem. I could go on to work on the harder problem. It's great. <clears throat> then I talked to my friend Paul after the test. <laughs> Paul's like, yeah, that problem wasn't hard. Just conserve momentum. and. What? <laughs> you can serve momentum. Oh, momentum. I did not conserve momentum. This is wrong. See, because that's a collision. I have to conserve momentum. The process of the you know the bullet getting stuck in here. That's a collision. And you must conserve momentum at collisions. And not doing so will make this happen to your solution. Yeah. Yeah. So this is actually a two-step deal. I have to think about the process. I need to think about a third event, the collision. Like just after, maybe think about just like a just after the collision happened kind of thing here. Where the speed of the combined thing is V1. So I can say momentum is conserved before and after the collision. So I have M V naught is equal to M plus big M, V1. That's conservation of momentum in the, in the collision. And then my logic is OK. Then I can consider the upswing of the pendulum. That is a conservative process, just gravity slowing it down until you know, it comes to its maximum height and swings back, right? So if, 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 in view of that, then I, I can say that one half, you know, one half um, m plus big M, v1 squared is equal to m plus big M gh. But you notice that the velocity the, swing, the upswing starts with is not v0, it's v1, which is different, you know? And so then I can I can just do the math here. Why isn't energy conserved in collision? Collisions which are not elastic don't conserve kinetic energy. Again, there's you know if you actually were to take the temperature of the clay thing before Sorry. and after it would be increased. Um, so the energy gets put into you know kinetic and random kinetic motion of molecules which we which we perceive as uh, raised temperature, um, sound, light. All kinds of stuff that I probably am not thinking of. Yeah. So if that was say like some kind of metal pendulum and the bullet bounced off, it would be a totally different problem. Yeah, if the if the if the bullet bounces off, if the bullet travels through, those are slightly different problems that have to be dealt with accordingly, yes. But again, momentum is conserved before and after. So if, if I if I also knew that if, if the bullet traveled through, right? And suppose its speed was cut in half, for example, right? Then this the, this concept it wouldn't be this anymore, right? It would be there would be another term, right? First of all, like hypothetically, suppose that the bullet travels through and then leaves the, the mass with half of its initial speed, just as an example. If that was the case, you know, if, 
if the bullet leaves here, would say be not as a two just afterwards. Then conservation of momentum would look like this: m v not equals to big M v one plus little m v not over two, because this would be the initial momentum, and that would be the final momentum, and that would give you a different v one. Right. Not all of the momentum of the bullet would be given to the to the pendulum bob. Just just like half of it. On the other hand, the bob might swing further up, and some, I mean, the bob would have less mass to, um, have, they have more momentum for that smaller mass, slightly smaller mass. Anyway, it's a different problem. <laughs> I, I can't, I'm, let me focus on my problem. <clears throat> so, H is then what? H is equal to, oh, well, the M's cancel. So I get um, one half. V1 squared divided by what? Uh, GH oh, divided by G because I canceled the M plus M. But V1 we can write as what? That's really 1 over 2G. What is V1? You can solve this one for V1. V1 is actually what? It's actually M V naught divided by what? M plus big M. That's V1 and I can square that. And so there you go. That's a formula for the, the um, the height of a standard ballistic pendulum. Yeah? I thought there was a dependence on the length of the pendulum rod. No. That would be true for the, um, like the period of the pendulum, but we're not talking about period here. I'm just talking about the height of the thing goes up to. The different lengths for the pendulum bob, I suppose, would correspond to having different angles. Like this theta, we can have that L. The longer L was, the smaller the theta. And if it was sufficiently short, the problem, the, the setup wouldn't quite make sense. If you've got so much potential energy that you get above the, uh, the circumference of the rotation, I don't think my equations make sense anymore. Okay, anyway, that's the ballistic pendulum. <coughs> If I can find the other problem here in my notes. So, roughly speaking, we're in. Uh, oh man, I just covered it up. There we go. Lecture 21, lecture 22. I think I've covered most of the essential points in both of these. There's a few more examples that you'll profit from looking at. Um, do I have that in here? Maybe I don't have it worked out. All right, let me, let me start working on a problem. This is a famous problem. That's basically, you guys played pool before? Like, billiards or anything If you hit a, you know, if you hit a pool ball with another ball, right? So one of the pool balls is at rest and you hit the other one. If it's not dead on, if it's a glancing collision, what's the angle between the two balls after the collision? Angle being defined as the, uh, you know, angle between their, their trajectories, their, their initial tangents, if you like. And of course, the balls usually go in straight lines anyway, we can ignore extent. We are ignoring extent, of course. Maybe you have a right angle to each other. Right angle, yeah. If you play pool at all, you know that. Yeah. And pool balls, to a pretty good extent, a pretty good approximation, they're like kind of like springy, so when, two, when they hit, basically they're kind of like just spherical springs in some sense or another, they just kind of compress and then bounce back. There's very little energy lost, you know, decent table. And if there's good felt on the table, it's pretty pretty close to, I mean, there's not much friction. It's a good table. So this, this, the pool table is actually pretty close to this idealization, my, my point. Um, <clears throat> so here we go. Suppose you have MA sitting here at rest. And then suppose you have MB here, all right, and it, uh, well, I guess we can make M, I mean, fine. I'm probably setting this up wrong. I'm a little worried I can find it in my notes. But let's suppose it goes and uh, it hits the ball. So this has initial velocity, say V naught, all right. Um, 
I think I, I, my, my spider sense is tingling. I, I, I think that um, this is a danger, 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 unnecessary complication of calculation. Let us, um, without loss of generality, suppose that the glancing blow is made by a ball moving pretty much horizontally. So, I mean, that, that's not really, not, if you think about it, that's okay. That's not, not really changing the problem much. We're just choosing coordinates which are natural. Okay, so it's a glancing blow, but let's suppose that um, MB is initially in our coordinate system of horizontal velocity, okay? <clears throat> so that means that the initial momentum is what? This. Right? Okay, then there's this, you know, glancing. We know what happens if it hits, if it hits it dead on, we already know what happens. What happens? Right, MB, stop, MB stops right where MA is, and MA goes on with the same speed. Which corresponds to that relative velocity flipping rule that we derived last time. Right, so the velocity of, if it was dead on, we got velocity of B minus velocity of A is just, you know, B not zero. And then afterwards, it has to be minus B not zero, which would mean. And if you go back and look at that relative velocity thing, you can see that that force is what he just told me. In the one-dimensional case, but the relative velocity thing is not true in two dimensions, as it turns out. But something nice is still true. So let's see. We need to come up with two, like, sort of, you know, hypothetical. So suppose A goes off, and so the details of what angle A goes off at depends on how the glancing blow is struck. Right? That's the really complicated part. I think that's the art. You're right. I guess that's the difference between me and somebody who can actually play pool. Um, but uh, you know how you choose the glancing blow will determine how this one goes off in this direction, right? So, so say B A, and then, and I guess we could we could we could define that to be angle theta, right? <coughs> and after the collision, um, maybe B goes down this way, and, and I'm not going to draw it as if it's 90 degrees because I don't want to assume the point, all right? I mean. I'm telling you, we, we're going to work out that it's 90 degrees. We're going to use physics to prove that, okay? So here's ZB. I don't know B A and B yet. I am assuming that the end, that the collision is elastic, though. So what, what does that tell me about B A, B B, and B not? How do they relate? Yeah, kinetic energy initial is equal to kinetic energy final. So that, in this case, tells me that you know, M B B naught squared. And I'm going to take your advice and I'm going to multiply this by two. That's what you guys told me to do last time, right? So I'm going to take you up on it. Multiply by two. Who needs halves anyway? All right. Um, two times the final kinetic energy, well, you've got M A B A squared plus what? M B B squared. Those are vectors, right? No. This kinetic energy is a scalar. I can say this though. V A is a vector. I mean the vector on that's a speed. Um, but V A as a vector would be what? V A cosine theta? V A sine theta, right? Yeah. On the other hand, V B as a vector. Um, the speed is dv, dv vector, the actual velocity of v would be um, the, the uh, cosine beta. And to be careful here, we need a minus now, right? Minus dv sine beta, we sine beta, beta, sorry. Right? So what other, I know momentum is conserved, right? In an in, uh, in elastic collision, I know both kinetic energy is conserved and momentum is conserved as well. So that, that gives me what? So, momentum, so this is kinetic energy conservation, momentum conservation. What's that give me? It gives me MBV naught zero is equal to what? MA VA cosine theta. Plus MB, BB, cosine beta, 
comma one. Now there, there's no there's there is zero initial momentum, which is nice that I, we chose coordinates that way. So I've got ma um, da sine theta um, plus oh not plus minus right mb bb sine theta right oh sine theta. So it's a vector equation, right? That means I have two equations, actually. Let's look at the y one first. What does that tell us? We have, well, we have ma, ba, sine theta is equal to mb, bb, sine theta. Sine theta, right? Theta, yes, I, I tell you. Determined to make that wrong. And okay, we also know what? We also know MD B naught is equal to MA BA cosine theta plus MD BB cosine theta. Well, I guess the one thing I would do would be to multiply 1 by mb. Then that would give me what? That would give me mb squared. b not squared is equal to what? ma and b. ma and b. b a squared um, plus mb squared. b b squared. And part of the reason I would think about doing that would be what? Well, down here I've got, I've got this infinity m, b, b naught, right? So if I square 3, it matches up with this, right? So 3 squared gives me what? I get myself an m, b squared, b naught squared, right? Equals what? M, a. BA cosine theta plus MB BB sine beta of oh, cosine beta rather quantity squared. So those two things are equal, right? But you can foil out this cosine term, right? Like multiply it out what you get. squared, ba squared, cosine squared theta, plus 2, ma, mb, um, ba, bb, cosine theta, cosine theta, plus mb squared, bb squared, cosine squared theta. Right? Now, cosine squared, hmm. you know, if I square 2, I know things about sine squared. How can I trade, trade cosine squared for sine squared? 1 minus. Yeah, 1 minus. So, 
you see what this really is, is ma squared ba squared minus ma squared ba squared sine squared theta plus 2 ma and b, ba, bb, cos theta, cos beta, copy, plus mb, bb, mb, mb squared, bb squared, minus mb squared, bb squared, sine squared beta. Yes. Now look at what we got. This, let's call it Batman. And this, I guess we'll call it Robin. So if you look at Batman and Robin, you can see that there are two terms which are um, almost. Oh, I'm an idiot. I should have had what? When I multiply this out. Um, no, no, I, I, I have a uh, MB squared. But we do have MABA sine theta. Um, Will this fix it? What did you say? That's true. Can we, can we start substituting in? We've got MABA squared places. Well, I really wanted for this to cancel with this. Of course, that does happen, right? But I also was looking for this to cancel with this. Nope. But you know, maybe this result's only true when the masses are equal. That's certainly true for pool balls. Oh, so. that sense. Let's suppose that MA is equal to MB. You're like, oh, now? Now you're going to do that? Great. I'm not sure that that's necessary. Can we do that on a test question? <laughs> suppose <laughs> it's not working out. The size of the, the mass of the pebble and the mass of the pebble. I'm assuming that they are equal mass. I think if you did this much, then the mass. Um, so if, if MA and MB are equal, then those cancel, right? And you're left with what? You're left with um, basically, let me just call that M. So you're left with M squared. Um, M, A, M squared, B A squared, sine squared theta minus, right to M. We just cancel the M, right? So you get to the point. There's an M everywhere, so. Wait, are we doing division here or fraction? Or? Divide by M squared. So what you have then is the A, B, B, cosine theta, cosine beta, right? And then minus the A squared, sine squared theta, minus the B squared, times square beta. But what do I know about, what do I know about, you know, I know that BA sine theta, right, is equal to BB sine beta. So I can, I can trade, I can get a BA, BB here too, right? See what I got, I got cosine theta, cosine beta. Minus what? Well, so I, I, I believe
Oh, I neglected. I should be getting two copies of it. What have I done? Oh, I'm gonna do it. None of us know. No, 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 no. This is this is right. This is right. But I made a typo. What have I lost? This is a very important thing. There's a two. And so if I factor out the two, the A and B. You got what? You got cosine theta, cosine beta, minus sine theta, sine beta. You guys know what that is? Yeah. Uh, Wait, it's the it's the thing. Yeah, cosine theta plus. So hold on, how did sine theta cosine beta turn into sine theta sine theta? Very careful. Is it the There's no cosine theta. Is it the addition of minus? I'm asking. Yeah, but I, I treated I treated that. Where did the cosine theta come from? Oh, it should be sine theta. Um, oh, I'm sorry. It should be sine sine. I'm thinking. Yeah, you guys don't know what it is for good reasons. It's not a thing. Okay, so those are supposed to be sines because they trade sine theta for sine beta, right? And then I had the right thing in the next step. <laughs> what is this? Theta plus beta. Theta plus beta. Right. Adding angles, identity for cosine. How can cosine be zero? The velocities aren't zero. How can cosine of theta plus beta be zero? Right, theta plus beta equals 90 degrees, which is what we claim. Can we not? Have we can play pool. I put this on desk before. Where does it put this on desk before? Yeah. It's usually a bonus question. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I seem to have gone over. I will go under some other day. Yes. 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 Yes.